In this tutorial, we will teach you how to work with the Layer Styles feature in GIMP. To work on this feature, we would have to install a plugin first. So let's open up the Help menu on top, move to GIMP Online, and then click on the Plugin Registry option. This will open up GIMP's official website. Over here, let's move towards the right side of the screen and search for the Layer Effect plugin. From the search results, we will be opening up the Script Foo Layers Effect option over here. Simply click on that option and you will be redirected to the download page. Over here, click on the download link below and this will download the Layer Effects plugin file which will have a .scm extension. This means it's a script file and will have to be installed accordingly. For that, we will need to copy this script file and place it in the GIMP installation directory. So let's copy the file first and open up the C drive. Over here, we will move into the Program Files folder, open up the GIMP folder, and there you will see the Share folder. Opening that folder, you would have to move into the GIMP folder, and there you will see the 2.0 folder. Entering that directory, you should open up the Scripts folder over here. After that, simply paste the script file here, and we are done with the installation. Now let's open up GIMP, and you will notice the Script Foo option appearing at the top here. If you don't see any such option, simply move to the Filters menu, and right at the bottom, you will notice the Script Foo option. Move to that option, and then click on the Refresh Scripts option. After doing that, you should see the Script Foo option appearing over here next to the Filters option. With the scripts successfully installed, let's create a new document where we will show you how layer styles can be applied. Let's pick up the text tool from the toolbox, and we will insert some text here. We will be applying different styles on this text. Before we get started, let's select the text first and change the font to Gil Sands MT Bold and its size to 86 points. After that, let's bring it in the middle of the canvas, and now let's start with adding the layer styles. First, let's give this text a three-dimensional look. For that, we will have to work with the highlights and shadows. Therefore, we will be applying the bevel and emboss layer style here. So let's open up the script foo menu at the top, move over to layer effects, and let's select the bevel and emboss option over here. When you click on the option, a new window will open up. Over here, we will keep the style to outer bevel. That will apply the effects to the outer edges of the text. Let's keep the depth option as it is, and make sure the amount for size is not a high value. This size option actually refers to the size of the effect that will be applied on the layer. A smaller number will keep the effect closer to the edges of the text. So keeping the value at 5 for this option will be just fine for now. Last of all, since our background is white here, we have kept black color for the shadow. You can work with different colors according to the composition you are working on, but mostly the shadow color you'll end up using will be black. Now let's click on OK to apply the filter on the layer. As soon as we're done, you will notice new layers appearing in the Layers panel towards the right. Note how the black shadows have been applied on the text, adding to the outer bevel effect and giving the text a 3D look. Now let's apply the drop shadow effect on the text. First, make sure that the text layer is selected. After that, let's move back to the script foo options and select the drop shadow option from the list. With that done, a new window will open up. Over here, again you can determine the color you want for the shadow. For this tutorial, let's just keep it to black. You can even change the opacity of the shadow according to your requirements. In this case, let's just decrease the opacity a bit keeping it to 56.5. Since we don't have any artwork in the background, we're going to leave the blending mode option as it is, but you can use this option to blend the shadow with the background if the artwork requires it. Furthermore, you can even determine the spread of the shadow, meaning how much space it will take up on the canvas. For now, let's just keep the default settings as they are, and click on the OK button. Once done, you can see that the shadow has been applied to the text. There are other layer styles you can experiment with here. For example, giving the artwork an outer or inner glow, or applying gradients over the layer. You can experiment with all these different options and add effects to your artwork. Lastly, we will apply a pattern over our text. So let's select the Pattern Overlay option from the menu. With that done, a new window will open up. 
Over here, simply click on the Browse button next to the Pattern option, and you will be shown the patterns that are available in this plugin by default. Simply scroll down and select the pattern that you want to apply on the artwork. For the text here, we will apply the Pastel Stuff pattern. You can even determine the blending mode of the pattern from here as well, or you can simply change the blending mode of the layer this pattern is on. For this tutorial, we'll work with the second option, so let's click on OK and close the window. Once the effect is applied, you'll notice on the Layers panel on the right that all the effects we have added are in different layers and are properly labeled. That's one good feature present in this plugin, as you can now easily customize the artwork when everything is properly organized. So let's make sure that the pattern layer is selected, and we will change the blending option of this layer from the Layers panel only. So let's open up the Mode drop-down menu above, and from the many options, we will select the Lighter Only option. This will blend in the pattern with the original red colored text layer behind it. As you change the blending mode, notice how the color and the pattern layer completely change according to the layer behind it. You can work with different blend modes here and see what would look better. These are some of the ways you can use layer styles in GIMP. Keep experimenting with different options and see what you can come up with. Thanks for watching. This was a howtech.tv tutorial.